Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake. Tearless season is back on, and we have a special one today. Uh, we're talking football, not my messy jersey that I'm wearing. Uh, but man, we are a week away Whew, from football games that matter. Um, so hey, maybe you're going to call it lamestream, but it's one of the best exercises of the year. I have a group chat that argues over this, I'd say, four times a year. Um I'm a big Ryan Rosillo guy. I know he just did uh, his his QB tier list. Who does he do it with? Um, I'm going to have to look that guy's name up because I feel awful because it's actually him. Mike Floro. Florio. Florio. Excuse me. Um, we are joined by Justin Panic, Talking Giants. Talking football. Warehouse athlete. Oh. Um, and I know you're, you're juiced up to hear some football opinions that aren't Bobby Skinner and Chris Rose, because you guys have been in the lab recently. Yeah, man. Uh, football today has been fun over on JM Football, um, where like we did a QB tier list, and we were kind of basic with our tiers, and right. just seeing how your brain Not works. Here. Ten minutes before we started recording, I'm like, all right, Jake, give me give me these six tiers on what your brain's thinking, right. how we're going to organize these people. And, well, you said this is kind of chalk. It's not chalk. These categories are not chalk. Well, I think I've already thrown you off a little bit, because... Yeah. Um, I want to start off on a note that I think might lead to just a little bit of debate. Not that this is an episode of first Jake, but, um, I, for me, when I think of the NFL quarterback position, mm -hmm. I think of Patrick Mahomes at the start Yeah, and panic. I made the first category and I'll tell the people the tier list and we'll get it on the screen as well. You could play along at home. Uh, I have the first category as, does anyone deserve to be with Pat? Um, and that's about our friend Patrick. Uh, the second one I labeled as, could win MVP. Uh, interested to see where that convo leads. I put Joe Flacco. I don't think that's current Joe Flacco, but I wanted to label it as like a quarterback that you feel excited in a playoff game. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, like you have that magic feeling of sports. Like, I don't want to give too much away. I feel like Jared Goff could land there. Like, there's a lot of Lions hope this season. He's put good seasons together that, you know, if the Lions season goes as they're hoping, right. they're hitting the playoffs excited with Jared Goff. Yeah. The next category I have labeled, and Joe Flacco had that miracle run, people, people forget. No one's forgotten, Joe. Everyone remembers. And he's still playing football. People forget that. Mm -hmm. Had was one, one my... Fantasy League last year. Not for me, but for another guy. Joe Flacco was the starting quarterback. <laughs> That's insane. Anyways, the category below that, and it's currently a big divide, and if you've done tier lists with us before, you know we may add a category if we need to, is that it's horrified in a playoff game. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're on the other side of the scale, um, whether you're talking maybe a Lions or a Browns roster, that if you had this quarterback – you're more so living in fear of the first round exit than the like, wait, can we make a run? Yeah. Um, below that, I have great backup QB. Again, interested to see how this yeah. sorts out. Great backup QB is a bad starting QB. And at the bottom of this list, we currently have the category labeled bottom of this list. We didn't sure. know how rude we wanted to be. It's kind of not what we're about. Sometimes a name forms. Sometimes we see a group of guys and we're like, wait, these guys all... Former Wisconsin Badgers. Mm -hmm. Russ. Um, I want to start at the top, and that starts with Patrick Mahomes, um, as I mentioned. Um, and I'm interested to see, because everyone knows the big... I think everyone has a top four QBs right now, that it's Mahomes, it's Josh Allen, it's Lamar. Mm -hmm. Who am I missing? Is it those three, and then everyone else is in discussion? It could, it could be those three. You know, and you start talking Stroud and everyone else. Pretty so we'll, hurts, yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay, so I think there's a clear top three, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Burrow, Burrow. A lot of people love yeah. Burrow. But that's probably your clear four. Right, coming off the injury. I think with Burrow coming off injury, everyone wants to see it. It's supposedly a bit of a weird one, too, right? Like, it's a wrist injury that a lot of people haven't. <laughs> I think he's fine, and he hasn't missed a single practice. This is the first time in his career that I believe that he hasn't missed a single practice during training camp, which we're already off to a much better start. Look at that. Than we were last year. Two ways to skin a cat, people. You could look at Joe Burrow and say he's got a unique wrist injury. You could say this is the most training camp football he's played. Yeah. Um, where it gets interesting to me 
It's depending how wide of a scope you want to go. Because could win MVP, I think all the guys we just mentioned, everyone's heart would be open to that mm-hmm. easily. Does anyone deserve to be with Pat? Is the feeling, for me, it's the feeling of there's two minutes left, you just punted away, your team is up four, and what do you think is going to happen? Right. When it's Mahomes, you've prepared to lose. Like, there's, that's just it. There's one guy that I think undoubtedly deserves to be with him. Okay. It's Josh Allen. Yeah? It's Josh Allen. In that, I'm not in that scenario, wrong, but I, I want to hear you, I want to hear your argument. In that scenario, where I understand the interceptions, I understand the recklessness, but in that scenario where you're talking about game on the line, right? Right. I want Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes under center, and I don't think the divide is as dramatic as people like to maybe make it seem. Mahomes, Mahomes is there. Mahomes, Mahomes is number one. But does anyone deserve to be with Pat is the category, and Josh Allen deserves to be with Pat. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, man, I, I guess, okay, here's what I'll need you to talk me off of next. Because mm-hmm. Mahomes, I'm going back to that legendary Bills-Chiefs playoff game that literally changed overtime rules. Mm-hmm. And one of the best offensive football games ever played, I think you could say. Um and where Josh Allen is very different is his running is still ferocious. That, you know, third and seven, you're nervous about what Mahomes can do. Yep. And his running and elusiveness, right. obviously, is still a massive Allen factor. has the design stuff, too. Right. Is, like, Josh still, Allen is a tight end. Yeah. Um, and he's still in his prime that the scenario la- I laid out, the full fear my team is about to lose a four-point lead. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen on that third and five, if the first read isn't there, he almost can run for it instantly. We're going. The way you have to play defense at that point in the game, Josh Allen can, can get that. You call a designed run, and it's not a, it's not a bad call. But I would guess this would lead to the next guy mm-hmm. of Lamar Jackson. Right. Does Lamar Jackson not have the same fear factor as Josh Allen? And I think it comes down to the playoffs. Lamar needs to prove it in the playoffs. Mm. Now we're talking, right. Panic. Baseball, we don't get to talk about stuff like that. Yeah. Like, Clayton Kershaw starts fights. Right. How can you talk about the best pitcher of our generation that way? And it's like, well, that's <laughs> this is how we get measured. Mm-hmm. This is what we're trying to do. Um, okay, I think I can actually process that pretty good. Like, I think I, that's I would fair. view... Like, I view... If we're talking about elite QBs and how, how we did it on... We did actually did a tier maker... Football Today episode on JM Football right. two months ago. Elite, good, decent, middling, and backup. So there it is certainly the, like, that's more chalk. Yeah. And the categories aren't as, aren't as unique as this. I put Mahomes. And we're a team here, Panic. I put this Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, and Jackson all in the elite tier. But if we're talking about does anyone deserve to be with Pat and four minutes left, you're, or two minutes left, you're down by four, right? Nervous time. Yeah. Lamar Jackson in the postseason has had these moments that it's, it's not great. I think the team let him down last year. I think Odell kind of let him down at certain points last year. Zay Flowers getting that 15-yard penalty Ooh. when he has a big play. Let him down last year. But still, Lamar has some bad throws on the postseason that he's got to shake off. So not there with Mahomes and Allen. Okay. I um. I don't know if I want to put anybody, deserve, does anyone deserve to be, to be with Pat yet? That's what I'm saying. Because mm-hmm. I, I guess here's... And this is an impossible question, and that's why I like having you here. Is Josh Allen closer to Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson slash Joe Burrow? I think he's closer to Mahomes. I think you're right. Yeah. I do think you're right. Now, let me ask you this, too. I wanted to ask you this before we put anybody on the tier list. How much are you including, or how much are we including in this tier list? And I think it's best practice to not, like, surrounding circumstances. Like, the fact that Mahomes has had... Hill, Kelsey, Andy Reid. Right. Allen does not have that. Right. So our, it's something that you do. You you have to be cognizant of it when you're talking about a QB tier list of surrounding situation of coaching, talent, et cetera. It's the beauty of sports. Right. Is that it? It doesn't count, but it absolutely counts. Right. Um, but that's why I like how you boiled it down to game on the line. All right, that's our criteria. Well, and that's the thing, and I. That's where the teams 
are going to have to factor into this because, um, you know, if, like I said with my Jared Goff example before, if Jared Goff went to the Washington football team, the yep. New York Giants, a couple other teams. Yeah, those I, old lines aren't the same. I don't <laughs> think we would have as much belief in Jared Goff. Right. But they have those coaches. They have those teammates mm-hmm. that that's currently where they're at. Right. Um, that it's impossible to take it out of the equation, unfortunately. Yep. Um, but it is a part of the equation. Mm-hmm. Um, so if Mahomes and Allen are top dogs, I'm open to it. The tier below obviously starts with Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow. Yes. So um, are we are we locking? Does anyone deserve to be a Pat? Are we nothing's locking locked line? until the final second of All the right. episode. Okay. So if you get cold feet about something, you are more than welcome to make one more adjustment. Okay. I, gotta um, I want to talk about Burrow just a little bit more and see where, where are you at Please. with Joe Burrow? I think the Bengals are winning the Super Bowl this year. That's your, you're in. I'm in. The the Bengals were interesting. One, one of the hotter teams in the NFL. I think they went four and one before Burrow suffered that injury against the Ravens. I think they suffered it, and the only loss that they had was to the Houston Texans on a last second field goal. Yeah, but you had them beating really good teams like the 49ers, Some I think the Browns they beat as well in there. So some really good teams with some really good defenses, and they were going. And Zach Taylor, Burrow, even had Callahan, too, at the time as the offensive coordinator, now the head coach of the Titans. Mm-hmm. They saw what they were doing towards the start of the season, and they adjusted. <laughs> they got more explosive. They started throwing the ball even more. They trusted Joe Burrow. And as soon as he was cleared from that calf injury, like the second that he was lifted, there was no injury designation. Week 5 to week 10, they were going. And I thought they were getting hot at the right time. And who knows where the Bengals would have went last year um, if Burrow did not get hurt. So I'm choosing them this year. Um, like I, I, I'm not shocked if Burrow does win MVP this year. So could win MVP, yes. Yeah, it's a... I'm going to say a sneaky big year for Joe Burr. Um, yeah. Obviously... Everyone knows where they're at with Joe Burrow. I think the more and more you dive into it, that LSU championship gets more and more impressive. What we've seen him do on the football field is insane. That I think he can challenge Mahomes for the biggest fear factor. And I, he has in the past. He's challenged Mahomes in the past. The, yes. big, the big bad Chiefs, it's the Bengals that have been the ones that have challenged him. Right. And the Chiefs got better. And the Chiefs got better. Unfortunately um, for everybody else. Man, Burrow, and I, it's tough with injuries and when you don't see a guy, um, but it's kind of, it's again how the world works. Uh, if Joe Burrow is back, I mean, I, I, think, I think I like the pure nature of Joe Burrow at his best better than Josh Allen. But yeah. when you miss some time, and Josh Allen, you you just know what you're gonna get, and he's gonna dog it. And I mm-hmm. I think there's times that he even leans on the run too too much. And, Al, and Allen because could, Allen so could be good. reckless. Allen could be Allen a little can reckless. be reckless. That's where when Burrow, when Mahomes or even Burrow, I think at the end of that game in that situation we talk about, you expect just precision. They're gonna get the ball to someone, mm-hmm. Kelsey. Um, they're gonna get it to Chase. You don't know how. Somehow you've schemed up everything to stop this. Yep. And that's where it gets complicated with the coaches and Andy yep. Reid and how good he is. And Zach Taylor's earned a lot of respect in this mm-hmm. league. Um, I I don't know. I, I, you need to be reminded from Burrow, and I think by week three we could all be reminded. Yep. And staying healthy. I mean, that, that's why. It's a factor. You know, if, if he had that year where, you know, if he had that year where he's healthy last year, and even if they don't go on to win the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. But we could easily have Joe Burrow up there with des- deserves to be with Pat Mahomes if he has that slow start to the season. All right, and then we look at it, be like, oh, the stupid calf injury, and then he just finishes it really strong like he was going to between weeks 5 to 10. Um, I don't know, man. He needs to stay healthy, and that offensive line when it gets to the postseason, because they like to spread it out. Right. They like to only have those five-man protections. Some of these other quarterbacks, like six, seven-man protections, so it allows more time, more downfield routes. They got to protect him up front when the pass rush is going to get amplified in the postseason, and that's what's going to define Joe Burrow. Basically, 
how we've kind of viewed Joe Burrows, the run that they ha- that these quarterbacks have in the postseason. That's how we kind of define them. And where are you at with Lamar? Last year was the year. Last year was the really? year they had to do it. Really, you're doing that. Last year was the year because the Ravens had everything going for them defensively. They lost some key pieces on that offensive line. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm I'm not an Odell lover. Um, I guess you can call me an Odell mm-hmm. hater if you had to put me if you had to put me in a that in a would window. be the other side. Ugh. I don't want to. I don't want to say I hate any player because I don't hate Odell Beckham Jr. But for how I think a little overrated he is, I think he's properly rated now. But yeah. anyway, the Ravens lost him. And they didn't necessarily replace him. Mm. So they have Zay Flowers and then Rashad Bateman, who, former first-round pick, meh, whatever. Mm. They're getting Mark Andrews back. And, yeah, you have some tight ends that can catch the ball. But you lost some key pieces on the offensive line. Derrick Henry, bro. Mike McDonald is now the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, and they lost some key defensive players there too. So the Chiefs' down year was last year. The Ravens' year, where they had everything going for them, was last year. Mm. I'm a little worried, a little worried about Lamar Jackson and the surrounding cast this year. Okay. But they have Derrick Henry, and they're going to run the ball, and they're going to be good. But are they going to be as good as they were last year? Because, Jake, wonder what they did last year? They, they kicked did. the crap out of teams above 500. That's what they did. Right. Like, usually you have – Yeah. We do this in all sports. Your record's against good teams, your record's against bad teams. We're going to do it with Dak Prescott. We're going to do it with, like, teams like uh, – the quarterback like Tua. It's why they're going to be down in this tier list. They kicked the crap out of good teams. Um, and that's what defined the Ravens last year. They had to finish it, and they didn't. But I love Lamar. I love Lamar, though, man. I know you do. So I that's, love that's Lamar. Where I, was, I was interested to see where your angle was going to land, and love I get Lamar. it. You're, there's something to a football season coming together that is tough to replicate yeah. if you're not Patrick Mahomes every right. year. Um, and they and like the Bills lean on Josh Allen so much, and Josh right. Allen can do it. Yeah, I think Lamar Jackson can do it now, too. But now they're in a bit of a different offense where Greg Roman's gone. Greg Roman mm-hmm. back with Harbaugh out in L.A. They're going to run the damn ball. Yeah. But Lamar Jackson, we're running a little bit more of a conventional drop-back offense. We're running more with three wide receiver sets and less big full backs and two tight ends, three tight ends. So this is more of your conventional drop-back offense. Can Lamar handle that with even offensive line play going now? Because this will be the first time, and I think in a long time, that the Ravens won't have a top O line. Let's get into the grit of it uh, with the DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring this video. Whether you're cheering for your alma mater, college football season Mm. is here. Bet just $5 on anything, and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Um, Go check it out. I mean, they've got same-game parlays. They're your spot to bet touchdowns. Anything you would want to bet on, DraftKings has it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code BAKERS. We're going to talk about a guy with that name in a second. Yeah. Bakers. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Bakers, only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Okay. Could win MVP, there's I'm now realizing, here. is like a dirty category. Dirty? I think there's more names here. I think you're right, but I think Lamar and Burrow are also a tier above a lot of the guys that I think are going to get mentioned. But, but I, where, I guess where would you start? Stroud? Let's start with Stroud. I'd put him here. And I... Oh, there? That's where it gets <sighs> tough, Panic. That's where I'm half open to adding another... These four are on a different platform. They are. They just are. And that's the whole point of tier list, right? They are. But, I mean, if Jordan Love could win MVP this year, Jalen Hurts... Could win MVP this like that. Year. Jordan Love is honestly the name I saw that I was like, wait, he could win MVP this year, mm-hmm. but he should not be with Lamar and Burrow. He's one of the top. five He could odds. be bad. We just we just did a Family Feud okay. videos where he's one of the top five odds. Add Jam Football. Um, okay, so let's rename this. Let's do the Jackson and Burrow tier as could be with Pat. Yeah, I like that. Could be with Pat. Which would then... And then we're adding a row below. Add row below, and that will be can win MVP. And I still like this because, as much as I've mentioned Jared Goff, I don't think Jared Goff can win the MVP this season. Right. I mean, the Lions would have to go 15-2 and 
His numbers would have to stand with everyone. Mm, they're they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. That defense would have to be electric. I, No offense to Jared Goff. I don't think he's in that category, but I think C.J. Stroud is. So let's list a couple names, and then we'll talk through yeah, them. Because I think Stroud, everyone is pretty much in on. Yep. Everyone just wants to see what year two looks like. Should be. Stroud, we have already mentioned Jordan Love. Yep. I, I think he deserves to be there. And like you mentioned with the DraftKings lines, mm-hmm. um, they don't mess them. around with that. Um, who else? Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. I... There's a couple names that brought a weird little creepy smile to my face that people on the YouTube just saw and were probably like, what was that? Jalen Hurts absolutely deserves to be on that line. Pivotal year for him. Mm -hmm. If he takes another step down, the Jalen Hurts crowd. I feel weird saying this around like Chris Rose and Bobby Skinner because Bobby Skinner sometimes doesn't like. Let this be a safe place for you, Justin. But I know you're going to get it. Yeah. I think the Eagles have issues. Mm. And it has nothing to do with... Oh, the, the early down pass frequency. What voice or is that? They're they're running they're running cover one, cover two, cover okay. three. Bip, bip, bip. It's nothing to do with that. You think it's their quarterback and coach hate each other? I think, I think there's issues with Big Dom, like Big Dom as oh, a coach okay. now. Like I, I, there's nothing that I could specifically measure. Right. But there's just weird vibes. Okay. Because Jake, they were ten and one last year. Yeah. And the city was burning. Like, it was, it was like, oh, my God. I, I like, like, you have the most talented roster in, in the league, basically. Yeah. You're 10-1, and one, and, yeah, you can make some adjustments, I'm sure, to play better. But then after that point, after they were 10-1, and one, they really fell apart, and they, be really, they became a bad football team. And Hurts can't identify to pick up a blitz. Their coordinators mm-hmm. were really bad. So, yeah, they got rid of the coordinators. They brought they bring yeah. in Vic Vangio, and they bring in Kellen Moore. And I love Vic Vangio. I love, love Vic, Vic Vangio. Vangio. And I even think Kellen Moore is going to play up to his talent, and the Eagles have good talent. Let's do a Vic Vangio <laughs> tier list. <laughs> I don't know what it's about, but I like it. And, um, man, I, I am more, like, they're, they're so talented. They have a really good, re- they have a really good receiver trio now. They just traded for Jahan Dotson. Yeah. Why do the commanders do that? They need a slot receiver. Um, I'm just worried they have issues. That's my talking point. It makes no sense. It's not analytical. It's not off of observation. It's just off of vibes. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Um... Where they could fall apart. But they could also win MVP. <laughs> Which is a crazy swing. I believe in centers. I don't know how much you know about this. Mm-hmm. Kelsey being out. Yeah. That's something. It's huge. Lane Thomas, Lane Johnson's incredible. Mm-hmm. He usually gets banged up at some point. So mm-hmm. at some point this year, this Eagles O line that's been incredibly dominant will probably be without Kelsey and Thomas. Do you want to know who they have starting at guard right now? It, I mean, to me, it looks like Mackay Becton and Landon Dickerson. You 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 familiar with Mackay Becton at all? Remember sure him am. from the New York Jets? How big he is, sure and he's am. a tackle. And now the Eagles got him at guard. Fascinating. That being said, for me, I think. I think the Eagles are going to be back. They should. I think the talent on they that should. field they should. and what went on last year. Mm-hmm. Dude, they got away from, like, running the ball. Yeah. That's they what have opened, Saquon Barkley now. And that's what opened everything up. That I, I think Jalen will be back. He impressed me a couple years ago with how good his accuracy was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think they're going to get back to basics a little bit. Yeah. But keep that in the back of your brain that it could. It could go it the could other way. It could just blow up. And I think that's the thing, like, C.J. Stroud, for what he did last year, we should be talking about him on tears up. But the problem is... Yeah, I think Stroud is closer to that could be with Pat than Jalen Hurts is. Yes, but football often just doesn't work like that. Sports just often... That if you just project C.J. Stroud get a little better this year, Mm -hmm. he's... He's going to be incredible. Right. It's going to be insane. And there's a chance. Yeah. There's also football, baseball, every sport fight backs at some time. They're like, we haven't talked about Justin Herbert yet. And I think maybe that's where people are a little scared. Everyone thought Herbert at this point would be next. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's over for Herbert. But no one's really hot on him this year. All right. So let's, so let's, first of all, there's a guy that's sitting here. That I don't feel like need, need to have a long conversation on, but I want to just get him on this list. Okay. Brock Purdy could win MVP. 
Brock Purdy could win MVP. But I do want to talk about Justin Herbert. I want to put Brock Purdy up there because I he could easily be a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. Right. Right. I know we get hung up on Brock Purdy's size, and I think people just don't like that he's got kind of a baby face like me sometimes. Mm-hmm. And he's obviously surrounded by riches, some people's favorite coach. Uh Number one running back, you yeah, can he's, argue. He's in the best the offensive receiver, infrastructure in the, the tight end, the oh, all of it. Yeah. He's in the best offensive structure in the world. Yeah. It's a great way to put it. Um, that Yeah, he could outplay, I think, that whole row of quarterbacks in a mm-hmm. right season. Um, but do I think Brock Purdy is, is a better quarterback? Here's the thing. Do I think Brock Purdy is a better quarterback than like a Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love, CJ Stroud, even throw Justin Herbert in the mix? No. But could he win MVP? Yes. Right, but I, I think the only thing I'd counter to that is that from what Brock Purdy has shown with what Houston has this year, do you not think if Brock Purdy was in Houston that he could he could put together a season? He could, because you, you, you want to know you why? Know? Bobby Slowick was on that Wonder Boy 2011 Washington staff. Right. Like all of them were, yeah. like Shanahan, yeah. um, LaFleur, McVay. So they all come from like that same tree. Right. So yes, I do think that Purdy would... Under, under the similar circumstances of scheme and everything, yes. I mean, there's an argument that Jordan Love could be the most talented of this crew, mm-hmm. but we've only seen it for half a season, right. if we're being honest. Yeah, not even a whole half. And if we're if you cannot believe in CJ's... Not, not, I don't want to say not believe in CJ Stroud's season. CJ Stroud was awesome that's last year. Insane. I think it's just believing that there could be regression. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. Which is fair. And if you're going to believe in that for CJ Stroud at all... For Jordan Love for half a season, right? There's potential for that. Yeah. Um, who else do you think should be on this line? Could win MVP. Like I, said, I, I think that I think Herbert's a fascinating discussion because I don't think he belongs and could win MVP. And I, I think I think skill wise, right? If we're basing this off of skill, he can win MVP. But he is not winning an MVP under Harbaugh. No. They're going to run the ball. They're going to have a top five rushing attack. This is what Bobby Sk- Bobby Skinner says. They're going to have a top five rushing attack. They're gonna, have a top, they're gonna have a top five rushing attack. Why'd you from start talking about the side of your mouth? Volume. Okay. But efficiency, they may not have a top five rushing attack. They definitely won't, because people are gonna know they're running it. Right. But that's that what might not going matter to do. a little bit. And they also have no receivers. You know what I did, love? They have no receivers. Don't say that about Lad McConkey and Josh Palmer. <laughs> um, Palmer never never. I did. They are one of the most interesting teams. I I was debating if I want to do teams with you or quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, click. Yeah, um, they're, they're more fun. Uh, I'm man, having fun. The Chargers are such a great exercise between Harbaugh changing everywhere he's gone mm-hmm. pretty much immediately. Herbert, the first guy Harbaugh signed to his staff, strength coach. Nice. Awesome. They He looks at it like Michigan. Mm-hmm. He wants to run the ball and have big they bodies. They did it in San Fran, too. And it worked. He does it everywhere he goes. Does it, it everywhere worked. he goes. Um, it is funny, you know, I, I was also just listening to some fantasy podcasts as I've been entered in some drafts, and we have one week from today, yeah. right? Um, Captain Morgan Playmakers League. It was, uh, it was funny to hear, uh, you know, one guy was like, I think he was saying he likes Josh Palmer, and he was like, you know, Keenan Allen's gone. Mm-hmm. And he got me good, because this is how people are talking about the Chargers. He's like, they're talking about them like they're Navy. <laughs> like they're running an option. <laughs> yeah. Like they're going to pass. But if they, it's ha- and they have and Justin seven, Herbert. seven, they're going to pass. And Justin Herbert is, is by far the most talented and best quarterback <laughs> that Harbaugh's ever had to work with. Right. Right. Uh, I think you're right. I, I am guilty of I love Herbert. Like I think he currently doesn't land on this line. I do think he lands on the Joe Flacco line. Yes. That if they get to the postseason, you'd. Let's do People it. would be about it. Uh, I'm glad. Let's do it. I'm glad Goff's already living there. We've done that. Herbert, the uniform. I, I feel. Kind of I feel yucky though. I feel yucky putting Jared Goff and Justin Herbert on the same QB tier together though. I feel yucky. I understand why, but also why hmm. the Goff stuff's gotten out of control. He's done it with two franchises. Yes, there's been talent around him. And, like, McVay, everyone was looking at him like a god at the time, and he did swap him out for Stafford, and they won. So that's, Mm -hmm. like, an all-time dunk. But now Jared Goff is playing really well for what was one of the NFL's jokes of a franchise. Right. The Lions? People love them. Mm -hmm. Dan Campbell was looked at as a goof. Yeah. 
People like, people were comparing him to Joe Judge. I get it that Herbert is the QB out of a lab, and I think Herbert's going to be on a higher spot next season, and I'm excited for that. But for what Goff has done, yeah. I don't know. We just need to... For me, okay, there's a lot of baseball people that tune into this. At a certain point, you got to get the outs as a pitcher. Yeah. You can have all the arm talent. You could do it. At a certain point, you got to get outs. Jared Goff's getting outs. Yeah. There are Josh Reynolds drop away from beating the 49ers. That drop kind of sealed it for them. So, Not to be full circle, is Josh Reynolds Navy? No, but I think he... Where'd he, he go to school? I it's, think he's he, a weird one. He may be on your Broncos. <laughs> Don't. No, there will be very little Broncos talk today. Uh, where Josh Reynolds go to school? Uh, Texas a and I'm not sure what that is. I'm trying to think of... He is on your Broncos, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll be later well, that was, in the tier list. That was full circle. That'll be later in the tier list. Who am I thinking of? I think there's another Josh or another Reynolds. Anyways. Anybody else that could win MVP? I, I have one. Who do Debatable. You I love me some Matthew Stafford. You think he could win MVP? Mm-hmm. I don't think he can. Okay. I don't think at this point. But he could go on a run. Absolutely. I, I think he's clearly on the fourth that tier. line. I'll settle at that um, tier. I think where he's at age-wise, I think the dynamics of that offense, I, I think everything involved. I, he also you plays would, a little too recklessly. I think you'd too. love to have him in a postseason game. Yeah. I think for he won the Super Bowl with him and McVay. Mm-hmm. And, dude, if, if Cup and Nakua are healthy and out yep. there. He did outplay Jared Goff in the postseason game. It's just his right. roster isn't as good as the Lions. Right. Um, they, yeah, I think Matthew is there. Likes being called Matthew. I've heard that from my friend Trevor. Sure. Um, I don't know if anybody else could win an MVP. Hey, I've got a weird one for you. Because sometimes MVPs are about storylines. Yes. Oh. Dak? Oh, where are you at with Dak? I have. Can I? Can I just tell you what Dak? What? I, what? What tier I have Dak in? <laughs> yeah, horrified in a playoff. Really? Game. Now I think that on a tier of quarterback, I put Dak Prescott on the same level as like a Brock Purdy. I put him in a very similar mm. sentence as Jalen Hurts. But if we're going off of this tier, I am horrified of Dak Prescott in a playoff game because that's ex- that's exactly why the Cowboys haven't extended him at this point. I understand what you're saying. They're playing this game of chicken, and it's dumb because they are going to extend him, but that's why they haven't ex- extended him. I understand what you're saying, and you may be right, and I, I want to talk through this. Um, Prescott, no one calls him that. No, Dak. Prescott. Mr. Prescott. Um, I guess here's my argument for Joe Flacco with Goff, Herbert, and Stafford. Could go on a run. Dak's going to put up the stats. We've yeah. seen it now. Dak could also win MVP in a way. In a way he can. He can. <laughs> Not expecting it. In a way he can. Sort of should have won it last year. And that's where I started this. I would like storylines. Like if Dak and the Cowboys are 12 and 4 and he has his stats from last year and like, no one else is there. We've done this song and dance before, exactly. Jake. Exactly. That's why, that's why he can't be up there. I do think he should be on the Joe Flacco line. The dude, with Dak's current resume, if he went on the Matthew Stafford run or the Joe Flacco run. Like, that's the tier he deserves to be in. You're not horrified of him in a playoff game, though? I am a little bit. So he belongs in the horrified in a playoff game tier. Let's save Dak. Let's save him. Because I I think name-wise, he deserves to be on the Joe Flacco tier, but I want to see the rest. Okay. Um, The only other one is I look down this. um, There was one that looked... I'm scared to ask you this, and that means, you know, we're at a great part of this exercise. Mm Mm-hmm. Where do you put Aaron Rodgers these days? I think he could go on a run. He could go on a run, right? He's Aaron Rodgers. Right. Yes. But even though... In a way, you would not want to see him... If you're the opposing team, you wouldn't want to see him in a playoff game. No. Because this is, this is also where situation comes in where you have to remove it. Because Rodgers with the Jets, with that pass rush, is just so scary. I'm going to try and remove it because Rodgers does deserve some of the same criticism that a guy like Dak has got. He's kind of not been very good in the playoffs. It's but I think Rodgers could go on a run. I think he Rodgers could go on a run. Right, let's put we'll him, put him there. Let's put him on the Joe Flacco line. Yep. Um, I'll do a final. Let's give him an old, an old guy tier. 
Goff, Stafford, Rogers, and then Herbert. You know, Herbert was born one day before me, March 10th, 1998. Oh. I did know that. You did? Yeah, <laughs> I just found that out today. <laughs> <laughs> that's always fun having your. I think my my recent athlete, I think Gio Urshela. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, is he on your birthday? He's either on my birthday or he's a year younger after. than me. Let's see. I have Lewis Brinson's page up. Those that know, know. Sure. Um, Let's get her Shella's birthday. All right, let's do the scared to start a playoff game. Uh, Gio or Shella, he's two years younger than me, so not perfect. <laughs> on on same day though, same exact day. Nice. <clears throat> oh, that's nice. Nice. That's um, nice. horrified in a playoff game. Uh, let's scratch one instantly that I don't even think we need to do it because everyone knows. I think it's Kirk Cousins. Yeah, fair. Yep. And I, I want to be complimentary to Kirk. Because I he puts up stats. I've mm-hmm. I think I've drafted him in both my fantasy leagues I've done, which was unplanned. <laughs> but I was just like, Kirk's when he plays, he gets Kirk's numbers. Kirk. They're gonna play in a dome. They mm-hmm. have talent. I'm I'm about it. But in a playoff game, especially now looking at the tier above him, I would much rather have those other four than Kirk Cousins. I'm gonna give you two AFC quarterbacks back to back. Okay, Tua and Trevor Lawrence. Perfect. Hor- we're horrified in a playoff game. Perfect. Um, do you forget the Trevor Lawrence comeback, bro? Trevor Lawrence and Tua have a very long time have ago. very similar fourth quarter splits and everything like that. I uh I've never been on the Tua train and he was making it sting a little bit. And it's funny how quickly that came back to earth in a way. I, I was I think I was on this show talking him up too. So Tua's Tua Tua is good. Mm-hmm. The Miami Dolphins are a whole mental exercise. We could have done Panic, I would have loved to do an episode with you that is just Dolphins, Chargers, and Jets. Sure. Because I think you could psychoanalyze those teams Mm -hmm. for days. For days. And maybe we will. Um, I'm with you on Tua. I I think, especially after last year's playoff game, people forget how that team gave up. (laughs) They just just don't beat teams. Right. The Dolphins just don't beat teams that are above 500. They don't. And those teams are in playoff games. Right. Um, Kirk Cousins, primetime stats. Trevor Lawrence, I'm I'm with you. I mean, they got off to an 8-3 and three start last yeah. year, and then and the then wheels fell off. And then he got hurt. And right. There was some bad luck Trevor Lawrence stuff that I'm very willing to, like, yes, a lot of drop balls. There was no quarter. It was, like, not even close. And, like, EPA lost on drop balls last year. A ton of touchdowns. Somebody uh, somebody made, like, a compilation of it. And it's like, yeah, that, that stuff is real. And there were also really good Trevor Lawrence throws on those touchdowns, too. So I do think Trevor Lawrence is going to be better this year. But Trevor Lawrence, there is areas in which he does need to get better. Under pressure, physically and metaphorically. Yeah. Like, actually under pressure, Trevor Lawrence needs to get better. Um, and then in just those high-pressure games, he also needs to get better in those two. Yeah, and that's where, again, I, I keep pointing to my go- guy, Goff God. Um, you know, Jared Goff's past two seasons, 29 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 30 touchdowns, 12 mm-hmm. interceptions. Fourth quarter splits are good, too. If we're talking about, hey, two minutes on the line, right. four points down, if that's still the criteria, Goff's numbers in, in that situation are good, too. Um, that I'm with you on Lawrence. I hope he climbs the list. I like him. I, I like think him he too. can ball I think out. He deserves it. And the Urban Meyer year, I still. Oh yeah. I regard that as one of the rudest things done to a quarterback, probably besides what happened to Bryce Young last mm-hmm. year. Um. Okay, Trevor Lawrence. Let's see. As I scroll this sheet, Joe Flacco, um, Deshaun Watson. Caleb Willie? I like are we in that turn? Gino. 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 Gino is just as good as these guys. Mm-hmm. I would be horrified to have him in a playoff game. I don't I feel like that's disrespectful to Geno Smith, but yes, like I I, I don't I don't want to look at I don't want to look at Geno Smith and be like, I'm terrified to have you in a playoff game. Because I actually like Geno Smith. I think he's been really efficient. I think it's a dude that Do you think he could go in the Joe Flacco? Do you think no. do you think Gino could lead yeah, exactly? No. I think those back. I think those other four quarterbacks in Joe Flacco, Goff, Herbert, Stafford, Rodgers, I think they could win a Super Bowl and go on that run. Sure. I don't think Geno can. No. And I like Geno too. I think they kind of ball, they sneaky ball out up there. I also I also I really love where the Seahawks are heading just as a team too. Um, you know, Mike McDonald's, you know, talked about him earlier, defense coordinator for the Ravens. They really developed a lot of talent over the years with the Ravens. I mean, that's and that's what that Seahawks defense has. 
Like, you wouldn't believe, like, right. the Seahawks defense has been bad. Like, really, really bad. But they have names up and down. And I think McDonald's is going to get them in a good spot. And then offensively, I love that Pete Carroll. I kind of love that Pete Carroll's not there anymore because if Geno Smith is good at throwing the ball, then let Geno Smith throw the ball. Let him mm. throw on early downs. You have but three Walker, really good receivers. Eh, he's not yeah, that efficient. Yeah, yeah. Um, J- JSN, Lockett, Metcalf. Like, let those guys work out of 11 personnel and, and rock and roll. Noah so. Fant? Yeah. He's still there? I believe so. Like him. Part of the Russell Wilson. Good trip. with the ball in his hands. Yeah, he was. Um, where does Kyler Murray go? It's a shame because that now now we're getting to quarterbacks that I like, right? But right. I, I feel it's rude saying I'm horrified of you in a playoff game. But you want to know it is true with Kyler Murray. A we're, little bit, right? We're gonna put him there. There's gonna be a lot of quarterbacks that are gonna be in this in this category, by the way. Where I may even want to add another one, but um, I like Kyler. I really love Kyler this year. Bobby Skinner's been calling the Arizona Cardinals of like a fantasy football team, like the mm, fantasy football offense, right. where it's like they have Marv, James yeah. Conner, super efficient. They drafted Trey Benson. Trey, Trey McBride, McBride was like top three in yards per run with tight ends last year. Um, even Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch. Nate, Nate Tice is a big oh, Greg Dortch guy. Easy yeah. with Greg Dortch. <laughs> He's a big Dortch guy. Um, it just sounds weird. just doesn't sound like you should be a good football yeah. player with less than Dortch. Sounds like if I'm calling you like a something rude, hey you Dorch, like right? it's a weird connection it's of a, letters. It's a weird. You'd, if someone told you Dorch was like an Austrian swear word, yeah. you'd be like, oh yeah. Kyler Murray's gonna have a good year. Don't call me. Kyler that. Murray's gonna have a very yeah. very fun year. That defense may be bad, but Kyler, we may be looking at the end of the year being like, Kyler Murray's back. I I hope so. He's electric when he's right. I hate to do this to a small guy. I don't think he can make it through a full season. Like okay. I think I think That's hit, fair. of the people on this row, I think the concerns are less football and more like Kyler Murray could take a hit in the first quarter and we've seen him you literally watch him and you're like that's not the same. That's not the same guy. Yeah. Like the lightning bug that almost does whatever he want, wants on a field and then you'll watch him for a whole game and you'll be like, "Well, he's not right right now." Mm-hmm. Um he's small, man. This will be a whole year, though, where he had an offseason where we're not rehabbing. Right. We're not worrying about that. Marvin Harrison? I, yeah, and I'm I with think you. We finally have a franchise, and we have the team over there where, you know what, they may not believe in him long term, but at least they're not in his ear being like, you, you may not be here. You may not be here. We may move on from you. Where I think there's a team that's confident in him. It's like, hey, you're under contract. You're here, man. Let's rock and roll with you. So I'm really excited for what the Cardinals can do, and I'm even more excited to see what Kyler Murray can do because I think he is a – I think he's an – I think he's above average quarterback. I think you're right. He performs when he's yeah. like this list would be very different in like one game, do or die. You need to win. Mm-hmm. Kyler would start climbing this list pretty quick. Had the prime of his career so far with Cliff Kingsbury and DeAndre Hopkins running an out route. Watch the commanders this year. Now that Cliff Kingsbury's over yeah. there, watch the commanders this year with um Jayden. you know Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin just running out routes to the sideline, throwing screens, and then, all right, we'll include the tight end every once in a while. That, that's what that offense is going to be. It's what the offense was in Arizona, and I think Murray, Hopkins, and everybody made it look much better than it really was. So I'm not a big Kingsbury guy. No, I'm not either. I think he's I, – I used to get into Twitter fights on it, but I think he's gotten – he gets extra love in this life because he's a handsome guy. Right. That's fair. So do you. Mike Leach outcoached him every step of the way yeah. and didn't get the same opportunities. Right. Anyways, that's for another time. And I kind of like Cliff, so I'm rooting for him. Maybe I'm part of it. Um, I think we need to add a category quick before horrified in a playoff game. Uh, or after, excuse me. Add a row below. I think we just need to lump the young guys quick because it's rude to call them great backup quarterbacks yet. Unless you want to put Caleb or Jaden or anyone on there. I almost wanted to put Caleb and could go on a run, but I feel like I'd be killed for that. I'd be destroyed. I'm just not. Dude, you're a rookie until you're not, bro. That's fair. You know? I like that I'm you're a rookie until you're I'm not. I'm sorry, man. Maybe that's it. You're a rookie till you're not. You're a rookie until you're not. Because I like Jaden. I don't love Bo, but hey. C.J. Stroud got lost in the mix last year. Mm-hmm. All the talk was about the other young quarterbacks. Yeah, Texans were supposed to have a top five pick again. And he just balled out. So, um, 
All right, this is a lame cop out, but we also do need to start start yeah. moving. At I this love point. Caleb though. I'm so excited for Caleb. You're in. Every, I didn't every know week, this. Every week there is going to be a, a throw and a play, even if they don't win. Caleb Williams is going to be very fun television every single week. And if you're a sports fan, now if you're a football fan that wants to critique things and 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 poo poo on that, then go ahead, have your fun. But if you're a person that just likes being entertained by fun athletes doing insane nutso things. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams is going to do that every single week. Um, and I also am not convinced that like I, I get a little excited about Bo Nix. Yeah. Get a, get a little excited. You want to know what? Because I think, I think as time has gone on, we're seeing Russell Wilson with the Steelers. Uh, oh, I th- just named their starter, by the way. Yeah. And I, that may be nasty. It may be nasty work. Like I don't think, I don't think anybody won that job in Pittsburgh. I think they just all right. We have to give it to somebody, right? And you saw how efficient Russ was last year, and that could have been in spite of Russell Wilson. Right. And I get it. How many sacks he takes? Bo Nix is, Bo Nix is at least going to keep an offense on schedule, and will not take them off schedule. Now, will they score a lot of points because they're not explosive? Probably not. But will they be a a watch? And maybe even a better watch, I would maybe say yes. Because Sean Payton. I don't know everything. I think we're going to find out this year that Sean Payton deserves a little bit more of a finger point than he's currently getting in the Russ situation. In a bad way or a good way? In a bad way. Okay. Again, I don't... I think it could wind up looking very good. It could. I I fully get that side of it. And he was all about Bo Nix, and who knows if that's just belief, or maybe he sees something, because he saw something and drew the whole thing. I mm-hmm. get it. Um, there were some weird play calls last year. Yeah. That, for me, that felt like Peyton, which was a reflection of Wilson, but was also Peyton. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That I just need to see that sort out. Yeah, there, were, there were, there. Were, I think we were even having conversations of: Is this the Denver Broncos or is this the Sean Payton football team? Well, people know where I stand on the onside kick. Yeah, um, <laughs> he had you out from there. Uh, so I think this is where you're going to start having fun, Panic. Oh, okay, because you're a rookie until you're not. Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels. Yeah, the three. Yeah. Let's see that. Drake May. Obviously. Drake, Drake May's in there. Yep. Big QB hey, year. He may not even play. Um, I think I'm putting Anthony Richards in there. You know what's crazy? I put a five dollar bet on Anthony Richardson to win MVP this year. Could hit. And I and I don't feel bad about losing he that five dollars. He could end up on a very different path. Oh man. I don't I think he's gonna be good, but for this tier, I guess he's kind have of a to. rookie till he's not, dude. I because it's 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 upside. That I'm not banking on right. Anthony Richardson in terms of but you like Caleb's right, upside. This is what I've seen. Oh yeah, for a very for their skill set. Exactly. But we haven't seen it yet. So rookie. So till you're not. You're a rookie till you're not. And Aunt Richardson just needs to stay healthy. And like, that's where we always find we're suffering two different injuries in the same game. Like we need to we need to not do that. Um, there was someone else. We we don't have Dak Prescott in a tier yet. No, and that you know he's. This is where we can go back. Um. There was someone else that made me laugh about potentially putting him. I mean, unfortunately, like, we don't need to put McCarthy or Penix on this list. Right. I don't think so. Um, You'd like me to put them on that tier because that's where they'd go if we're placing them, I guess. But They would go. Uh, we'll see if we need it for the graphic even. Oh, the one I wanted to put in there as a gag that I kind of believe in is Sam Darnold. I view him as a great backup QB. You're probably right. I just thought it'd be funny if he's... People have been on the Sam Darnold hype train now for half a decade. Yeah. I think um, I was watching a clip from ESPN, Mina Kimes. I kind of uh, Nate Tice was on that clip too, and maybe it was Charles McDonald. They were all talking about the Sam Darnold. Where it's like, all right, well, you know, if, if that, not not even a th- it's the opposite of a, the saying that my father used to say: if a thousand attaboys and one oh shit, what do you get remembered for? You get remembered for the o, for the old bleep, and. With Darnold, it's kind of the opposite, where people will look at... Did you curse then? Bleep it out? Yeah, I did. I, 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 I know we're a Dan Patrick Just vehicle now, out. so I don't know what we're allowed to do and not do. Um, <laughs> but people love to look at Sam Darnold's four, three good plays that he has in a game and ignore the 
th- you know, the, the 30 other I'm so ones that you. exist. I'm so with you. Yeah. The only part that scares me about this year, I am a Kevin O'Connell man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Adding Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson. Like, yes, Kevin O'Connell is going to elevate. He does elevate everybody. I kind of want to game... put him in the rookie category. That's making me no, laugh a lot. Sam Darnold, no. though? Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of the yeah. opposite of that. Yeah. I think I'm I think I might overrule you on that one. Okay. It makes me laugh. <laughs> okay. How old is Sam Darnold? Is, Sam, is, Sam Dar- is this like a rebirth of Sam Darnold? Is that what we're it doing? It could be, right? Just... I mean, dude, this is the guy. Baptism. Everyone that I know that respects football or talks about football in a way I believe in. Everyone loves Sam Darnold. If there is love, if there's a guy <laughs> that's going to do, the people figure, are enticed by him. The guy that figures it out later in his career, everyone would put it on Sam Darnold. I would personally put it on Josh Rosen. But. Stop it! Is he still in the league? We'll find his way back. <laughs> so, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put Sam Darnold in rookie till you're not as kind of like a this is a new beginning it's a for you a little bit as a goof but yes okay I'm doing it because I I believe in Kevin O'Connell like as you this should. is the final Darnold season for me if he doesn't do okay yeah Bakerish levels he's he's on a one year deal if then he, he could get doesn't paid. do it this year with Kevin O'Connell the offense they have set up. Mm-hmm. Like, I saw Josh Dobbs have good games last year. Yes. Yes. Like, this is his last rookie season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry to get emotional about that. <laughs> crazy. Um, There's still a lot of QBs we have to go through, Jake. Yeah, I know. Let, I think we got to start cooking. Where would you put Baker? Horrified in a playoff game? Do we get past yes. that? Yeah. Yes, I'd put Baker there. Um, Do you want to burn off some great backup I would, QBs? I would love if if Baker did have the run from hell in him. Just like the, basically like a replacements movie with Baker Mayfield where he brings a team. Mm-hmm. I want him to, I would, I don't know if it's this year. It's probably not. Nobody's really in on the books. If he could have a Mark Sanchez season where he's on a good team that goes to like the championship game. That's not, that's not this Bucks team. <laughs> that's sure not is. this Bucks team. Sure. But I will say, I actually, even though Canales is, now the new coach of the Panthers, and he technically got an upgrade. I, I actually like the fact that he moved on from Baker because they ran the ball a lot on early downs, and it didn't really work out for them. Um, they get Cohen from L.A., so you have a McVay mind kind of coming in and being like, we're going to do things a different way. So I'm excited for Baker, and I don't think the divide between the Bucks and the Falcons is as wide and dramatic as oh, maybe no. people seem to make it. Let's shoot through some backups. I think I've, I've got like five minutes, so I, I think we start... Great. So here, can I? I'll just I'll, I'll rattle hot. through a few. Great back. Great backup quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota. Sure. Joe Flacco. Yeah, you're right. Gardner Minshew. Yep. Um, I'm putting Justin Fields. And, I'm putting Justin Fields and too. and Russell Wilson in great backup QBs. There's an argument for Russ for the bottom of the list, but I won't fight you right now. Okay. Um, I am putting James Winston as a great backup quarterback. Yep. Um, and I'm going to stop there. Okay. Uh, where's Deshaun Watson go? Dude, I want to put him bottom of the list. Yeah? Yep, I'm putting him bottom of the list. Let's do it. Because he has been that bad. Like, remove everything that's yes. surrounding Russell, remove everything surrounding Deshaun Watson. He has been that bad. I want to look at the stats for one second. Do you, do you want to know how much he's getting paid over the next four years and the Browns money. can't do anything about it? Oh, my God. It's a lot and fully guaranteed. They can't do anything about it. Um... It's my. It's not coming up, but my guess is sixty-two million dollars. Dude, he was five and one last year. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can Bryce Young be a rookie till he's not? Yes, 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 yes. I was right. Sixty-three point seven million dollars over the next uh, one, two, three, three years, and they can't do anything about it. Bryce Young's a rookie till he's not. Should Deshaun Watson be great backup QB? I mean, Deshaun Watson and Russ Wilson right now. Come on. What's the difference? Okay, but then who is the bottom? It's a good question. Where's Will Levis? He's a rookie till he's not. He is. He had a nice little sample last year, but okay. I, I do want to put him in the rookie tier now. I actually, I'm very excited about Will Levis. Okay. He's, a, he's another one where, like, Sam Darnold, where I, I like Will Levis more just because he's younger. So, you know how people, like, ignore the bad stuff with Sam Darnold but like the good? Mm. It's the same thing with Will Levis. I pretend I do not see the bad, but the good is so fun, where it's like, 
throws off platform and both of our feet are off the ground and it's like Mahomey. Hey, Derek Carr never got placed. Derek Carr never got placed. Rookie two, you're not. Oh, no. <laughs> See, you're starting to get it. <coughs> Horrified somebody, in a playoff. Somebody game. else, you're close to the situation. Horrified in a playoff game. I think he's he's close to great. I backup. think I think the Saints win like five games this year. I think they tumble. But I also don't think he's a great backup QB. So that's why I want to put him in rookie two or not. I can't put Carr in rookie two or not. I know. I know. Darnold, I can. <laughs> um, I'll put him in great backup. Okay. Because, dude, if they are bad this year, I don't think anybody I think I that. believe in, then he is. Like, this is kind of yeah. it. Like really, like, really think about it if you're listening to this. Are, are you, it sounds outrageous, but are you really going to blink at it looking at the rest of these, looking at the rest of these guys? So th- that leaves two quarterbacks left for me. Okay. Uh, Dak Prescott and Daniel Jones. Where are you putting Daniel? <sighs> Rookie two. <you're> not. <laughs> 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 you found the escape valve. You can say what you're thinking. I, I People are acting like Daniel Jones' 2023 season and him being Jamarcus Russell is the norm. It's not the norm. Daniel Jones is not the same quarterback as he was in 2023. But the main thing that I'm worried about heading into and heading into this year is, is this confident shot. Right. Like, between the neck injuries, the ACL, there's whispers in his head, no matter how much you think you, he, right. an athlete can ignore it or not, there's whispers in his head being like, the Giants want to move on from you one year after giving you this massive $40 million contract a, a year. Um, all that stuff, I'm worried that it could get to him and it could impact his confidence as a quarterback, even if he can make decent throws and do good stuff. So, um Jake, you, you do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot put Daniel Jones where maybe he belongs on this list. You do it. There's a great backup QB argument. There is. But I also, I also don't want to act like Daniel Jones. I can't. Daniel Jones is better than all of these. Is he better than Derek Carr? Right. But he's better than Mariota, Flacco, Minshew, Wilson, Fields, and Winston. That's the thing. So you do it. I'm going to do you a favor because you've done me a favor being on this show. Yes. He's a rookie till he's not. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Another reborn player. Malik Neighbors, reborn. We have two capable tackles, reborn. And you know what? Let's put, let's put Deshaun up on great backup QBs. So we have the Steelers quarterbacks and the Browns quarterbacks on there. So who are we putting at the bottom of this list? I think we're just deleting it. We're deleting bottom of this list. Yeah. Oh, I, I kind of like the idea of having one person at the bottom of the list. I know. But then it would have looked yeah. like... An, Anti Deshaun thing, which I don't know, kind of is an anti Deshaun. I know, and I, uh, but for some of the names, can we just, he's can we just pop Zach throw. Wilson down there. Is that, is that scratching? That's itch I don't, you? I don't want to be rude. Is he to even Zach. on a he's, team right he's now. He's saying all the right oh, things in Broncos camp. <laughs> Panic. Where are we putting Dak Prescott? Can we put him in horrified in a playoff game and call it an episode? That would. I mean, I just elevated Daniel Jones. You don't think he could go on a run ever? You don't think he could go on a run till he shows me otherwise. But you want to know what? For a con- you did me a favor, right? I think I have to. I'll I, do you a favor. I don't. Aaron Rodgers, uh, Dak Prescott, Joe Flacco <laughs> could go on a run. All right. The final tier list is done. Does anyone deserve to be with Pat Mahomes and Allen? Could be with Pat Jackson and Burrow. Can win MVP. Stroud, Love, Hurts, Purdy. The Joe Flacco can go on that playoff run your team dreams about. Goff, Herbert, Stafford, Rodgers, Prescott. Horrified in a playoff game. Cousins, Tua, Trevor Lawrence, Geno, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, your rookie till you're not, Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, Daniels, May, Richardson, Darnold, <laughs> Levis, Young, and Jones. I'll put, put Darnold and Jones next to each other. <laughs> and a great backup quarterback, Mariota, Flacco, Minshew, Fields, Wilson, Winston, Watson, and Derek Carr. Justin Panic, thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you guys check out everything that's going on Jam Football, Talking Giants. We got some streams summing up. We've got everything foosball this year, football today. Um, Biebs, tell them about Uncle Dan. Wake and Jake is a production of Dan Patrick Productions, John Boy Media, and Workhouse Media. Bong.